Oh, hi. You caught me. Just about to play a new game called Curse of the Caribbean. Also, got me a new microphone. New microphone. At least this way, if I knock it, it's not gonna fall over like the. I keep looking at myself. I am the professional. Mm -hmm. So let's begin. The rolling. The sound of rolling waves fills filled my ears. I cannot read. I rubbed my eyes, wiggled out of bed, and shuffled over to the shades that hung in front of my bedroom door. I pulled the shades open. The sunlight flooded my dark room. Squinting, I stumbled out onto the porch and from my way to the railing. I quietly stood there, waiting for my eyes to adjust and enjoy the sea breeze. It's so beautiful here. Casita, hello there. I'm guessing that's what her name is. My eyes still hadn't quite adjusted to the sunlight, so I couldn't tell who was calling to me. Over here. Good morning. I shaded my eyes with my hands and squinted in the direction of the voice. Is your grandmother awake yet? No, sir. <clears throat> Since she took her medicine last night, she's been out like a light. Alright then. Well, let her know that I asked about her. I still couldn't see who he was talking to, but smiling and nodding is the best way to get out of those awkward situations when you don't know who someone is. Will do. Thank you. After the man left, I stood staring at the scenery for a few more moments, enjoying the cool breeze. I guess I go down to the beach to look around until she finally wakes up. The long stretch. I got ready for the day. In this case, getting ready for bed. It was so early that most of the villagers still weren't awake. Without them around, the beach was nice and quiet. I slipped off my shoes and sat down to watch the waves, dipping my toes into the sand. I su was supposed to come here to help my grandmother with our half of the festival work, but all I really wanted to do was sit back and enjoy the view. Suddenly, a huge wave rushed in and knocked me flat on my back. Oh, I'm soaked! <laughs> okay, I wiped my face and wrung my uh, skirt as I stood up and headed back to Grandma's. I'd have a better chance at avoiding sudden violent waves there. Hey! Hey, you there! I shielded my eyes from the sun and turned towards the man who had called me. What? You to Syria? I wanted to say no in return for his rude tone and behaviour, but I thought better of it. Since these villagers are friends of Grandma, I should be respectful. Yes, I am. Is something wrong? My gr grandmother needs you. Aren't you supposed to be helping her out for the week instead of lollygagging around at the beach? How do you know that? His bossy tone really irritated me. I brushed my hands off and took a deep breath to calm myself down. Yes, sir. Thank you. I made sure not to make eye contact, ooh I just did, as I walked past him, uh, but I could still feel his eyes burrowing into the back of my head. I hope the rest of the villagers are nicer than this guy. And Grandma? Grandma? I made my way up the porch and glanced at my grandmother's open window. I could hear the sound of water running, her curtains were gently floating in the breeze. Grandma, are you awake? Gigima. Nothing. Dot dot dot. Da dot dot. I know she's awake. Why isn't she answering me? Taking a deep breath, I called out to her once more through clenched teeth. Gigima! Is that you, Sugar Pop? Her laughter floated through the window. I didn't know why, but it irritated me when she called me that. It sounded silly, but I guess it made her happy that that was all that really mattered. I sat down under her window and shook the hem of my skirt dry. Some rude guy down the beach said you are calling for me. Oh, that's the assistant to the village chief. Oh, that's the assistant to the village chief. I just read that twice. <laughs> Go at me. Don't worry about him. He's just an old sourpuss. <laughs> I giggled at our choice of words and rested the back with my head against the wall. What do you need me to do for the festival? I'm only here for a week after all. Well... 
you can help some of the older women gather food and materials to use for a decoration down by the shore. Or you could go to the Cape and help gather herbs and spices for the dishes that will be served. Anything else? You could also help with some of the cooking, or sign up to be part of the entertainment they're planning. You can go help those by the stands on the beach. What kind of entertainment? They aren't going to dance on top of fire or bite living animals' heads off, are they? Dear Lord, child, of course not. Video games and television must have twisted your little head. Sticking to myself. Mmm, error. I stood up and poked my head through the window. Yes, ma'am. I know. You still haven't told me why they hold this festival. Is that so? I suddenly felt tension in the air. Grandma fell silent. Did I say something wrong? Why isn't she saying anything? Grandma? Uh, uh, Granny? Oh, I see. You're going to force me to say it, aren't you? Oh, come on, Grandma. I, didn't, I don't like saying Gigi Ma. Yes, sweetie? I sunk back down to the floor, shaking my head with a silly sigh. Don't worry about getting started to work today. Just rest up and do a little exploring. But that man said that you wanted me to do something. <gasps> right. I almost forgot. I heard the screen to our door open and close. Our small footsteps made their way to the pantry. Around this time of year, we get free special visitors. Since my new medicine makes them so, me so sleepy, I'm not able to feed them like I used to. Do you think you could do it for me? Really? Well, only until the festival is over. For some odd reason, they disappear after the festival until next year. Spirits, ghosts, gods, aliens, predators, supernatural, spoons. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Pudding Pop. I'm going to go ahead and see what the girls are up to. I'll see you later this evening. I wonder what kind of people these guests are. Why do they only show up during the festival and then leave right after? I guess it could be tourists, but why are they bothering my grandmother for food? They should get plenty of it at the festival. Little leeches. This whole festival thing is a little odd. Why are they having it and why didn't grandma answer my question? Is she hiding something? I guess I could ask around about it. Until then, I'm going to sit back and enjoy this beautiful weather. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely weather. Desira. I rolled over on my bed and pulled the covers higher over my head. Desira, dear, our guests have arrived. What time is it? Eight in the morning. Give or take a few hours. Can't they wait till later to eat? Stop being a lazy tutti booty. <laughs> Grandma hit the bottom of my foot with our broom and pulled the covers off of me. See, this is why I tell you to go to bed early, unlike me. Which is currently midnight. Yeah! Five in the afternoon, it's not a bedtime, Gina. Our laughter filled the room as I slowly got up to start the new day. As usual, to. Okay! As usual, today was another beautiful day. I haven't done much poking around the island yet. Uh, Grandma's soft footsteps pitter pattered against the wood as she led me across the porch. Give them a moment, dear. They don't know you, so they're a little shy. Rubbing my eyes, I looked around to see who she was talking about, but no one was there. Where are the guests, Grandma? She dug in her pockets and pulled out a few round pellets. She tossed some in the grass, some in the water, and placed some on the railing. Here they come, dear. I heard a rustling in the bushes, and a short-haired cat emerged and began eating the pellets on the ground. Looking towards the water, I saw a little blue fish gulping down the pellets floating on top. I'm in charge of feeding a fish and a cat. And a bird. But I don't see... With a yelp, I ducked down as something came swishing past my face. You crazy bird! The bird landed gracefully on the railing and began nibbling the pellets. Eh. Now, I have to head out early in the morning to make it to the market, so I'll handle feeding them then. After tossing some more food, she dusted her hands off and handed me the bag and a tour list. You'll only be responsible for feeding them at night. These are the things that need to be done for the festival throughout the vigil. 
the village. Also, just so you know, the narrator of this game cannot read a single word without messing it up. This reminds me of someone that I actually watch quite frequently. Also, just so you know, these three can be a little tricky. I don't really understand how or why, but they all seem to have a personal preference for how you approach them. Try to learn their temperament. Temperaments. Okay, dear. Can't I just do what, what you do? Well, no. Since I've been around for them so long, they're already used to me. But since you're new and they aren't comfortable around you just yet, you'll have to get them to trust you. Patting my shoulder, she turned and walked away. I'm sure you'll do fine, dear. Just be yourself. A sigh. I dug my hand out of the bag and tossed some more pelts to the cat, who was sitting calmly by the bushes. Here, kitty kitty, eat some num nums. I tossed a couple more in his direction, making sure I gave him as much space as he wanted, but still trying to cock him a little closer. Don't you want to eat some more? He didn't move. He sat there, staring at me intently. He didn't seem to be fond of my kitty talk either. I don't bite. Come on, go on, eat up. After staring at me for a few more seconds, he got up and walked away. Not before tossing me what seemed like a mocking, amused look. Did he just... Chuckling, I shook my head and made my way to the bird. Nah, cats don't make expressions. I'm just having the early morning crazies right now. Yes, they do. They do make expressions. Every single time, they do. You're like, stop that. Go over there. Follow me. Do not go... Don't touch that. They just sit there like... I've seen it. And if, if you take something away from them that they've been playing with and you keep telling them not to touch it, you just see them as like... I will touch this. I will touch this. Regardless of what you may think of me, I will touch it all. Anyway, the bird had already finished. Oh, knows. The bird already finished all of its food and was now sitting on on the top perch. Watch me closely. I've something in my left eye, so I keep winking. Look at the pretty bird. I don't see it. Where is it? I've always had a fancy for animals ever since I was so young, so it was always easy for me to approach them. I even considered myself a possible animal whisperer. They just seemed to naturally like me. Though that was the first time a cat ever treated me like that. I figured out of better luck with a bird. And this microphone isn't even looking at me properly. Hang on a moment. Placing some feet in my ha in my hard. Placing some feet in my hard hand, I softly whistled to him, trying to get him to come down. Here you go, pretty bird. Nothing. Here you go. Come on, I won't hurt you. It didn't move an inch. Today really isn't my day with animals. Okay, I'll just come to you. I sat, I set the bag on the porch. I already got the hem of my skirt, climbed up the railing to get closer to the bird. Here you go. Ouch! With a hiss, the bird snapped at my finger and flew away in a huff. I quickly steadied my balance on the rail. Okay. Maybe getting close to strange animals really is a bad idea. Really? I then looked down at the fish, who was slowly swimming around in circles in the water. Since you're a fish, I'm sure you'll be much nicer to me than the other two. Climbing off the rail, I made my way down to the water, picking up the bag on the way. Would you like some... Just as I was bending down to drop some food in the water, the fish whipped its fin and smacked me in the face with a glass of water. Ah! Soaked. I landed on the ground with a fud and watched the fish swim quickly away. What is wrong with you animals? In a fit, I kicked the water and pounded my hand on my hands on the sand. I just wanted to feed you. After letting off something on my finger. After letting off some more steam, I went back to my room to get ready for work. Making my way down down No, I'm not doing that. Waking my way making my way down to the beach. I looked over the checklist of chores my grandmother had given me. Hmm. I'll only have enough energy to focus on one major task each day. Like me! Oh my god! What should I do today? Oh, go help by the shore. Go help near the cape. Go help near the beach stands. Hmm. I'm not too sure. Go help by the shore, go help by the internet, go help me near the beats. I don't I don't know which one to pick. I really don't know. How do I look? 
you look tired? I bet I look tired. I bet I look exhausted. I bet I'm just sitting here with my eyes very narrowed center. Listening to this very surprisingly calm music. Okay. I will go help. We'll just take it one step at a time from top to bottom. I'll go help out at the, sh at the shore today. I was surprised to see so many older women down by the shore, trudging through the water. It looked like they already started on gathering things for the festival. I slipped off my shoes and made my way over to them. But before long, I slipped on some wet rocks and I tumbled into the water. We really like getting wet, don't we? With a splash, I landed hard on my tailbone. Ooh. Some of the women glanced over at me with a baffled look on their faces. Others just snickered to each other. Ugh, I I'm supposed to be here to help. Is there anything you need me to do? Maybe learning how to walk correctly should be your first priority. Excuse me? One of the girls, who looked to be about my age, was laughing alongside our friends. Standing up again, I tried to regain my balance. Sure, but do you think you can tell me what you all are doing? I'm used to, I'm used to people being sarcastic and rude towards me. I try my best not to let it get to me. So they're all bullies then. It's not like I'm going to be living here for the rest of my life. What's the harm of one week of teasing going to do? Yeah. Just stay close to the shore and help gather whatever small sardines and clams you can find. Rolling her eyes and sighing, she dug into her wicker basket and held out a pretty coloured shell. Well, we're in charge of gathering seafood for dinner, and shells being sold as jewellery at the stands, as much of them as we can stand. As we can stand? Stand? What? Can I go back? As we can... Yeah, I can. As much of them as we can stand. Um, she picked up a cracked and dingy looking shell and held it close to my face. Make sure the shells don't look crappy like this. Everything needs to be high quality. If the food is rubbish, and the jewellery is rubbish, and the income that we gather from selling all this to the tourists will be rubbish, and the village will suffer. Your grandmother included. Ooh, what's this? Midge thing about family. Although she has a good eye for these kind of things, so let's hope it's in the game in the genes. How did she know who my grandmother is? Either this place is really tight knit, or people are just nosy. She tossed the shell into water and went back to her work. Well, I'll do my best. Where can I get one of those baskets? Closing her eyes and sighing heavily, she pointed towards some rocks. Maria, get this girl a basket. They're sitting only two feet away. Wow. One of the girls gathering shells next to Mean Girl quickly scurried towards the rocks and handed me one of the baskets. Sorry about that. Tristan doesn't take too fondly to strangers, especially if they're city folk. Maria, stop screwing around and get over here. If the profits this year suck. It's going to be because of you. Coming! With a small wave, Mira bounced back to Tristan's side. Well, let's get to it, I guess. I decided to distance myself from that group for now. An amonesty was pouring out from that girl, and I'd never avoid any confrontations for now. It also wouldn't look for gran good for Grandma if her troublemaking city slacker of a granddaughter ruined the festival. And besides, maybe she's just having a bad day and sticking out on me. Shoot. Gotta ask someone about the festival. Damn. I should have asked them about the festival first instead of what I needed to do for it. I'm still very curious about when and why it first started. Everything starts for a reason, right? I was too preoccupied by my thoughts to watch where I was walking and I slipped on something squishy and fell hard in the water. What is wrong with me? I looked down my foot and suddenly felt something slither away from the bottom of my heel. You've got to be kidding me! A basket had flown out of my hand when I fell, and now it was starting to float away with the current. I tried my best to snatch it back up before it drifted too far. Get back here! I was able to snag one thing around the handle and carefully pulled the basket back towards me. I looked inside and saw something dark wiggling around. Is that a... Snake? Ah! <laughs> Some of the other girls heard me screeching, and they all started to panic and stampede out of the water. Everyone but me, of course. I was stuck with a snake swimming right in front of me. I wasn't used to walking in wet rocks, so each time I went to run, I kept slipping and falling back into the water. I had her, 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 her. I had heard on those Amazon Amal shows how dangerous certain 
water snakes were, and this place seems to be close enough to being semi Amazonian weather. Oh. Back, you animal! The creature was tangled up in some seaweed which was slowly floating towards me. Shoo! Go away, shoo! I tried splashing it away, but was afraid that sudden movements might make it strike out at me, so all I could really do was kind of gently shoo it away. It's not a snake. Out of nowhere, a boy with deep, sea blue hair smoothly moved in front of me and gently picked up the coiled animal. It's a seal eel. It's native to this island, and it's harmless. Well, that's just science on the kick right there. I'm sure Miss Tristan will be elated to hear about that. Maybe I can hurry up and find a dead snake floating around and play the whole situation off. As I stood there looking a bit dumbfounded, the boy untwisted the eel and carefully set it back in the water. You shouldn't have come here. Go back home. I was. It was kind of cute how he was talking so calmly to the eel. You must really like animals. Usually people only talk to them if... I was talking to you. His voice was soft and steady, but I felt the atmosphere around us become tense. You're only going to get in the way and cause greater damage. Go back home. Weren't you told that this area is off limits? A lot of the eel nurseries are over here. Oh, n no, I didn't know that. Are they endangered or something? Does something have to be at the brink of death for someone to show concern for it? I was a little taken aback by his heavy question. I had never really thought about it like that before. Even if something isn't dying, does that mean we shouldn't be concerned about it? Well. No, but since the ones that are thriving don't look like they need help, we don't pay as much attention as we do to those who look weak. So you have to look weak and helpless just to receive some help? Well, um, are the ones who look fragile really in need of protection? Could they be purposely looking that way to deceive others and take things that they don't really need? I guess some do. I didn't think that someone who looked as young as him would be thinking about these types of things. I'm shocked. Then what about those who need help, but are too ashamed to reach out and ask for it? Would you continue to ignore them? Putting it that way... No. It's usually those who always have a smile on their face that I need, but they are ignored because they look strong. It's not fair. Selfish people are always taking and never giving. They should be the ones who are ignored instead of those pretending to be strong. Something about him seems broken hearted, damaged really. I wanted to ask him what was wrong, I mean seriously, how, how did we jump from eels to human nature so quickly? But I just met him, should I really try reaching out to him so soon? Maybe I should just ignore it? Might be extra, might be, uh, extra drama that I don't want to deal with. Should we agree with him or reach out to him? Well, I will think I will leave that until the next episode. This is a very uh, dramatic change for Gen years. I read up it's supposed to be some kind of horror. Maybe it's horror later on, but not right now. Um, bringing up the topic about those that make themselves out to, to look damaged or there's something wrong with them all the time just to gain attention rather than those always putting a smile on so that they feel that they don't want to be responsible for other people being inflicted with their own down emotions. Like, if you don't feel that great for the day, but others around you are, you don't want them to see that and be affected by it, so you just pretend that you're happy. And that generally will have the opposite effect at the end of the day. Because you're, you never really approached and solved the problems that you were having. Very deep part of human nature just brought up there. Well, I'm gonna have to leave this here. If you liked it, press that like button below. Comment. Maybe even comment which one I should go with. Do I agree? Or do I reach out? You can subscribe if you want to, and I will see you or catch you <laughs> in uh, part two of. Curse of the Caribbean. Bye bye. You guys, people are interested in sitting watching the
video? Prove you wrong. One, prove you wrong. Prove.